Morning, everyone. Um, I understand I'm the person that's standing between you and the T's and C's, which are the T's and coffees here, so I, I hopefully won't keep you too long. Um, just a shout out to the Magico guys. Thank you for inviting me to, to chat here today. Um, and all you guys for braving the weather. It's, uh, it's great to see so many here today. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Shane. I'm a co-founder and director at Chatify. Um, if you have any questions, I, I like to do my presentations a bit informal. So if you have any questions as, you, as, you, as I go along, put your hand up and just ask or shout it out, OK? There's no problem. It kind of makes it more interesting for me anyway to, to go off a little bit of script. OK, um, I'm not actually going to talk about Chatify really at all today. So I'm not going to talk about the product. I actually want to talk about live chat, OK, what it is. So I wanted to really bring back the basics, start right at the beginning. Um, and if you go to the Cambridge Dictionary, it says live chat is a discussion between two people that involves sending messages over the internet, especially to get or give information about a company's product. OK, so the customer wants to get information. The company wants to give that information out. OK, so that's it at a basic level. The uses, um, the general use of customer support, you know, that's a, that's a big one. Customer has a bit of an issue. You need to try and sort it out. Uh, lead generation, so you might what, be collecting email addresses or something like that. You have the whole GDPR thing behind that. Um, customer engagement is a big one. I think Michael spoke about that a bit earlier. Engagement is key. And I actually put it in on the uses and benefits as well. I think that's really strong to, to engage with the customer all the time. And then obviously sales and marketing, so upselling and marketing as well. Um, uh, some of the benefits with it, you can add personalization. So you can have pictures, you can have your name, you know, you a bit of personalization when you're talking to a customer. So you're not kind of a faceless company as such. These are some recent um, stats about um, live chat popularity. Um, you know, beware stats in a way, but you know, it, it, it's about right. I think it's um, the most popular um, service amongst you know, customers or clients between the ages of about 18 and, and 50. 73% um, say it's, it's the, the most convenient way of um, chatting to a company. And, you know, millennials are more likely than other generations to use it. Okay, um, key thing here, the fastest growing industries for live chat are retail and e-commerce. So this is um, a trends and insight uh, um, document from Sassworthy in 2023. So th this is right up to date. So a lot of you here are using live chat. So again, this isn't a, a, a sell from me to you. Um, I'm not using it for a while. But be aware that it's still growing all the time. People are you know, ado adopting this technology all the time as we go along. Um, if you look a little bit on the customer service access, uh, you know, at the bottom, you kind of have cheap and cheerful email. You know, um, email us, we'll get back to you over email. It's not, it's not ideal, but you know, people, people use that. You've got your reviews, which is a, you know, a, nice, a nice way to add that kind of engagement again to your, to your website. It's, it's not very costly. Moving up, um, you have live chat. And it's not actually the cost of the software really at all that's, that's that expensive, really. I mean, it's, 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 it's quite a cheap piece of software uh, among most of the, the uh, chat resellers. Um, I suppose the cost comes with the investment behind it. So you have to kind of resource the, the chat. A couple of things that I say to people is that I would advise using live chat on your site, even if you don't use us, I would advise using it. But if you're going to do it, make sure it's resourced. You know, you, you don't want to, you know, that people are asking questions and then they're not getting replies or there's no expectation of a reply, there's no resources behind it. So there is a bit of a commitment there. And maybe you can have that discussion amongst yourselves there, you know, how you're resourcing it. And, you know, if, if someone's looking to use it, ask someone who has live chat on the site how they're resourcing it, you know, kind of what's the cost of that and, and how do they, they split the time between answering questions and, and other tasks. Then you go up along help desk, okay, that's for more big, uh, big retailers who can, might even outsource a help desk. But the main thing, I guess, is about positive customer service. This might be a little bit um, hard to read, the, the text is a bit small here, but it says at the top 94%, um, so a positive customer uh, experience makes me more likely to purchase again. 
Okay, that's true for everyone. If you get, have a positive person uh, experience with a, with a shop or a retail or whatever, you're probably more likely to go back there and probably tell other people as well. Um, the next one down, I have recommended a company based on excellent customer service. I've done that myself, so it's 82%. The next one, I will forgive a company for a mistake after receiving excellent service, okay? So this might be around maybe complaints. You know, everyone gets complaints in any industry. We get them ourselves, but I guess it's how you deal with those complaints and, you know, answer them in a kind of a, a polite and professional way. I think that's a really good sign of a company, and, and people do forgive companies for that. Um, I've made purchase decisions based on the quality of customer service. Um, I was talking to Paul O'Hay last night um, over a pint when Amazon came up, big bad word for Amazon. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm um, very likely to purchase from Amazon solely on the customer service. Okay. We, talk, we can talk about work practices and the work things behind the scenes, which is different. But one thing that I like to do, I like to go skiing. Um, and I bought a ski jacket from Amazon, but the reason I bought it well, first of all, one is because I liked it, but I knew that if the fit wasn't right, that I could send it back, and they would probably pay for me to send it back as well, so they'd cover the postage. So the risk was totally eliminated for me because, you know, a ski jacket is a big investment, you know, you're, you're talking a couple of hundred euros. So normally you would want to go in and try it on, okay, but if you're online, you can't really do that, so they have to send it to you, then you try it on. But if the fit isn't right, you know, if it's not comfortable or whatever, you know, it's, a, it's an investment that you're going to have for, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. You want to be able to send it back hassle-free. So, you know, that's something to, you know, to consider as well, you know, returns policy and, and everything that goes with that. Maybe it's the reason that Amazon are so successful. Probably is. Okay, this is um, just to see for um, some experiences. This is, um, I'm not going to mention who it is, it's a hotel site actually. Um, and it's a five-star hotel who have a chat system on their, on their site. Okay, so I went on and there's kind of, and I'll talk a little bit about bots and automation a little bit in a minute, but it comes up with menus about booking. Do you want a booking or do you want to um, uh, talk about children and beds and payment methods and stuff like that? So I went through a couple and then I said, th this is me on the right here, and I said, chat here with humans. So I wanted to talk to someone. Okay, and the automated message back was, no problem, you can call now on, I, I blocked out the phone number, okay, and our team will assist you, okay. So if you think about that for a second, I'm online, I'm on their site, I want to chat to someone, and they're kind of telling me, give us a call on the phone, you know. So, you know, it's obvious that this one isn't resource behind. Now, some of this is pretty good, so I'm not, not kind of knocking all of this, but, you know, you need to think, you know, boat bearer for me is sometimes if you get an automated reply in a chat system and they say, well, email us and we'll get back to you, you know. Well, I'm here, you know, I, you know I'm here, I want to talk to you, you know. Can you, can you automate a reply to say, I'll get back to you here in, in a while or something, a, a bit of an expectation of kind of serving me where, where I am. So I think that's an important one. Um, there's, a, there's an old telephone exchange behind here, um, and these are some of the, the, the messages you get back as well. Okay, we aim to reply in 24 hours. You're number 39 in the queue. I don't know if you're onto air or phone, <laughs> number 39, air especially. Uh, your wait time is 22 minutes. Okay, the problem with this, and okay, it's fine to set an expectation, but we're also trained now uh, by social media platforms, by messaging platforms, to, to kind of expect an instant gratification when we ask something. You know, you send someone a WhatsApp message, you know, the two ticks go blue, and you're kind of going, well, when are they replying to me? You know, it's like, you know, or I know they saw it, or I know they've read my message, I saw it, and they never replied, you know, I'm a bit annoyed, you know. Um, so, customer service has to kind of keep up with that. It's not easy to do, but just to keep in mind that we're being trained to expect that kind of instant gratification over these social networks. Like, for example, as well, um, you know, if you watch, uh, you know, TikTok stuff or whatever, the, the videos are very short. So now when, if you're watching a video, if it goes over kind of two minutes, you're kind of going, geez, I want to be really interested to watch this. So that kind of feeds back into marketing and how marketing happens as well. You know, it's really kind of short, snappy videos that, that they're looking at. So it's just an aside there. Okay, so um, bots and chats, live chat and bots and all this, okay? So I kind of compared a little bit to phoning a bank, 
Okay, I hate phoning banks now because you always get menus, right? Press one for this, press two for that, press three for that. Then you press the, the number, it goes into another menu. Press one for this, press two for that, press three for that. And a lot of the time, if you're phoning a bank, you just want to talk to someone again. You know, you're probably not ringing them to get your balance, but they're saying, okay, for your balance, press one. Probably not ringing about that, you know? Um, so just be aware of that if, if you're going down the, the, the bot route. Our take on it is we have um, a set of FAQs that you can populate yourself, give your own answers. Um, you can set them out of office hours. So that means that um, if you don't have someone manning it and someone asks a, a question that you have an automated answer for, so it might be around delivery, we'll, we'll feed that answer back. Um, we ask them, does it help? Okay, if it doesn't, and they ask a next question, we don't try to automate the response then because they say it hasn't helped already, you're kind of out of that automation loop and we try to get a, a, a human involved. Now that, that, that could be another automated response if it's out of office to say, look, there's no one here right now, but we will get back to you tomorrow or first thing or whatever, whatever that may be. And it's just about setting that um, uh, expectation. Okay, I suppose I couldn't uh, do the presentation without mentioning chat GPT. Um, it's okay if you, if you put your hand up for this, but is there anyone here who hasn't heard, it's, it's relatively new, so it's fine, who hasn't heard of chat GPT? Oh, cool. Oh, you haven't? Okay, that's okay. Is there anyone here who hasn't tried chat GPT? Okay, lots of people haven't tried it. Okay, that's cool. I haven't really tried it myself out in fairly recently in the last couple of months. But just to explain what it is, it's an AI platform. Um, OpenAI is the company behind it. Elon Musk used to sit on the board. He's not on it anymore. But Microsoft are a massive investor. In about 2019, they invested $1 billion into it. And just in January, it's reported that they invested another $10 billion into it. Um, and the idea is that you can, you can ask it anything, really. It's an automated response platform. But the idea is that it's, it's trying to, I, I suppose, at the very heart of it, it's tried to avoid fake news. You can put in questions, and it will kind of scour in the internet, come back, and tell you kind of what the, you know, what the deal is, I suppose, if you want to put it that way. Um, but I just, I use it, and I just um, went on, and I said, okay, explain what chat GPT is for retail customers. And it comes back with this, like the, this response came back in about three seconds. Okay, so just reading, if you can't read at the back, uh, the middle paragraph, chat GPT can assist customers with a right, wide range of tasks, uh, such as helping them find specific products, providing information about products, features and prices, and personalized recommendations. Okay, um, so I was thinking about this, and that, that's fine. And I said, hang on, I'm doing a presentation. So why don't I say, write a presentation for a retail audience, okay? So this is, um, it says, okay, it starts, good day, everyone. So now it's in presentation mode. I'm here to pre present you the main benefits of Chat GPT. I'm not going to go read it all, okay? And oh, by the way, I, I put in, it should be 500 words or less as well on, the, on my uh, requirement. Okay, it came back with customer service improvement, increased efficiency, personalization, which I use at the start as well, uh, improved sales, and scalability, right? And it came back as well, uh, in conclusion, okay, so it's kind of speaking, in conclusion, ChatGPT can provide uh, significant benefits to retailers, et cetera, et cetera, and at the end, thank you for your time, okay? This response was generated in about 15 seconds, okay? You can see type in response, it did it in about 15 seconds, and it, I put it uh, into Word to do the word count just to make sure, and it contains 396 words, so it's less than 500 words, okay? Um, this little baby here allowed me to take the time off yesterday to go playing golf with uh, Paul, so it was great. Okay, but look, these are the kind of things that, you know, it, it can help, you know, it can really help you as well if you, you know, in, in your work things. So um, try it, if you go to openai.com, you just have to, um, you just have to sign up with a Google account or something like that. Just try chat GPT. Um, 
It was quite funny because it was my wife's birthday recently, and I put into the chat GPT, write a love poem for my wife's birthday, right? <laughs> <laughs> and um, it did, it did, and I showed it to her, and uh, she was very impressed. Not with me now, with the system. <laughs> so if, you're, um, if your partners certain, suddenly become great poets, you know, maybe check out ChatGPT to see what's happening. Okay, yeah. Um, that's, I, I'm just actually coming to that as well. It's, it, it's more general, but it's a great question um, because if you look at my um, next slide, there, there are a few um, kind of warnings, if you like, about, about it. And this is from Forbes on the 9th of January. And it says that, you know, Meta and Shopify, are th these are companies that are, you know, big into this. Um, they're already using the, the technology. Um, but experts warned that you should be wary of some of the creativity and unpredictability. Um, so it's very good at coming up with, with new things that aren't very specific to one person or you know, maybe one particular shop or something like that. Um, and as well, we all know with customer service, a lot of it, you, know, you, you do have your generic stuff like delivery and, and, and all that, but there are certain things that you do need that human help for. Um, so what I did, um, and this, this, goes, this kind of addresses your question, um, a bit, and I put this into ChatGPT, knowing that it was a silly question for ChatGPT, right? I said, hi, I need to return shoes that I bought. What's your returns policy, all right? But if you look, even if you look at the answer that I came back, it says, um, I'm sorry, but as an AI language model, I don't sell or handle returns, you know? You know? Um, I wouldn't have been upset if they put you idiot in there because, you know, I, I asked such a stupid question, all right? But, it does say, um, if you could tell me where you purchased the shoes, I could help you find their website or customer service contact to get you the information. So it's trying all the time, time to help that. But with regard to a specific query, a specific niche query, it, it really can't answer that question. So that's why you will, you'll always need that human element of customer support. Great question. So I'm just going to, um, I just have, I think two slides, um, um, am I okay for time? Yeah. Okay. Um, just some um, tips here. Um, I would set the reply expectation for a customer. I think this is important. Um, and again, an analogy I'd use, um, when, you're, when you're sitting online, the time tends to go a lot slower than, let's say, if you're in a shop. So, for example, if you're in a shop and you want to buy a pair of shoes, okay, and you go to the, um, the, the sales assistant and ask them, You'll get a good vibe off the sales assistant. They might say, oh, hang on a second. You know, we don't have those shoes on display at the moment, but we got a delivery back and on. Let me go and check, OK? And then you're in the shop, and you're probably browsing around. So if the sales assistant has gone five minutes, you know they're kind of gone looking for them, and they're helping. They were very nice. If, if you do the same thing on a chat, you don't get that sense of what the person really is kind of like behind. They could say, they could be very polite and everything. OK, let me check that. But then if you're waiting five minutes online in front of your desk, you're kind of going, where is this person gone, you know? So you have to kind of factor in that, kind of always kind of update the customer on kind of where you are if it's an online thing, you know? Okay, I'm still checking this for you if, if it goes on a, a little bit. Um, for the, the um, chat, you can use it for marketing emails. For example, we, we um, I don't know how many people know this, but we have, um, a, a kind of addendum to a URL, you can put question mark my inquiry to any URL. So if that goes into, let's say, let's say if it's your homepage and you put this into a marketing email, if they click on that, it will come back to that page and actually open the chat automatically so they can type a question. So you could say in your marketing email, you know, if you have any questions about this, just ask us here. It goes back to that page and opens the chat ready for them to ask the question. So that, that's a kind of a good thing for upsell. Um, I put in here a bit tongue in cheek, uh, mind your language, okay? And I don't mean that you'd be effing and blinding on the, on the thing. You might do it in your head, but, you know, I, I don't mean that. But it's about just kind of even being overly polite on chat. Because again, you know, if I'm, if I'm chatting here, like you, you can kind of see my reactions, you know, or if I'm trying to help someone, I might, you know, I might say, Geez, I'll help you, you know, and I'm, if, if you're in person, you don't get that really with chat, so it's a bit of a downfall for that. But if you are kind of polite, you know, like let's say the customer thanks you or whatever, you know, 
don't just say that. Go back with your, your welcome, and if you have their name, you know, um, you're welcome, Paul, or, or whatever it, it might be. You know, try to use that personalization. So just just be aware that, you know, I'm sure we all did. I know that I've typed something in an email that someone has picked up a little bit wrong. You know, so it, the, the words mean a lot. You might you might have meant to say something. They picked it up a different way, and they say, "What did you mean by that?" Etc. And it can, it can lead to it, it can lead to other things. So um, that's just one 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 tip here. Um, okay, the, these are the benefits. I'm not going to go through it. You you probably know all these already. But you know, engagement and conversions are the big one. If you engage with the customer, they're probably more likely to convert. If it's a good experience for them, they're probably more likely to come back. That's kind of it in a nutshell, really.